Hi everybody, welcome and thanks for being here and joining us. Uh, my name is Jedediah Dore. I'm an artist, illustrator, and educator here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, some of you may know me from my online profile at Jedi Dore and from my reportage drawing work and New York City Five Boroughs Drawing Project. I went to Pratt Institute here in Brooklyn and have been making art as a professional illustrator since graduating. Now, I'm so grateful to Derwent that has taken me on as a new ambassador here in the States and has asked me to share this art tutorial with you. I hope it'll be fun for you because I love to draw and paint every day and I always have fun doing it. Our focus of the tutorial is how to illustrate a unique and dynamic still life. I want to take that idea of a classic still life painting, update it, and give it more character in life. A demonstration will cover the beginning of the drawing, including my sketching, and follow all the way through the process of applying all the different mixed media which we'll use. Now, I have a lot of fun objects on display in the studio, so I use some of the toys to make this still life, uh, including a vintage tin robot, a three airplane merry-go-round, and my favorite, the toy camera. It still actually functions. Now, I'm gonna turn the camera around and you'll be able to see my art desk and we can begin our tutorial from there. Great. I wanna show you the still life setup I'll be drawing and painting, including some of the objects I pulled from around the studio to make my version of a still life more interesting and fresh. I wanted to just briefly go over some of the Derwent supplies we'll be using today. These are ink tense pencils. They're quite nice because the pigment is vibrant um, and easy to apply dry or wet. You can use them with a brush and treat the pigment like a watercolor. You'll see they're, they're very intense and that's what I like about them. You don't have to worry about using too many washes uh, like you would with, with watercolor. Uh, and they also layer quite nice, uh, the, the color layers on top of uh, the other color very easily. So that's the ink tense pencils. When we do our sketch, we're going to use the good old Derwent graphite pencil. Now, if you want to draw and sketch before you actually color, it's actually pretty easy. I found it to be the easiest to erase the pencil lines um, with the H pencil. I think it's because it's not too hard and not too soft. The harder, the harder lead tends to make grooves in the paper uh, and the softer lead of course applies more, uh, more lead and so it's going to be a little bit more challenging to, to erase the, the drawing. Now that's if you care to erase the drawing. Some people leave it in, but if you want to erase the drawing after you do your wash or after you're done, uh, this is the pencil that you want to use. So that's what we're going to be using for the sketch. Um, towards the end of the drawing, now what we're going to do is, um, we're going to do a wash first and then we're going to do um, the outline at the end of the drawing. Now, this isn't really a fixed way to do things. You can, you can do it in reverse. You can do the outline first and then you can do the wash. I tend to do both. It, it all depends on uh, what kind of drawing I do. Um, so sometimes I'll do a wash first and then do a line and sometimes I'll do a line and, and reverse it. So um, we're gonna be using paint pens and these are really great because they're so opaque and they're so uh, heavy and rich that they can actually be used to color on top of the wash. So you could do a wash and even if it's a very thick, uh, dark wash, the, this uh, paint pen will go right over the top of it and it'll come through pretty quickly. Um, now, once in a while, if you, if you rub a little bit too hard, it might pick up some of the pigment and that's because the Inktense color is so vibrant. It might pick up some of the powder and might clog the, uh, the tip. So it's good to have a paper towel handy or, or just kind of use a, a spare piece of paper on the side to kind of get the fluid running in. And I'll show you how this works. Uh, it's really easy. And then to create some of the outlines, these are really great. These are line makers. Uh, these are just airing pens and they range from 
they have the the thickness and thinness so I'm going to be using the 0.8 and 0.5 uh, I like the 0.8 because I want to create some pretty solid outlines uh, towards the end of the drawing and you'll see how that's going to come in handy what I'd like to show you now is what you can think about when you're drawing something and you want to draw it dynamically. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how that works. So if you look here at this drawing, um, now you could draw perspective lines and it's really important to think about perspective when you want to draw dynamically. So I'm going to draw a little box here that designates uh, our sketch pad and, and our piece of paper. So what I'm imagining is, remember if, if the objects are here on this horizon and we're looking at it from a lower vantage point, so we want the objects to be higher, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw these perspective lines from that vantage point, right? And you can begin to do this when you sketch anything and it works pretty well um, because it adds a lot of perspective and a lot of um, a lot of scale to your drawing right so you don't have to put these boxes in and uh, but if you're not used to to seeing them when you sketch you can go ahead and do that and then erase it with the needed eraser uh, when you're done drawing okay so if you look here we have the camera, and then we have the tin box, and then we have the airplane merry-go-round, and then we have the tin robot, right? So I'm just going to do a very, very basic shape here to show you how I'm seeing it and, and how I'm making it more dynamic. So instead of something being completely flat, if we look at, you know, this, this camera as a square and then this tin as a rectangle and so on and then we have sort of another rectangle with with the arms of the merry-go-round and then we have the robot it looks rather flat right so we're considering that every object here has volume it has weight and it's uh, if you look at it like it's coming from everything is coming from that perspective that that vantage point there that, that I'm putting in the middle of the page right and that's about that's right about here not always in the middle but let's just say for for learning it's right here and so we're going to take the back end of the tin and then draw it out right just like that and you can see already there's a lot of three-dimensionality there's a lot of scale and perspective happening just by drawing it that way and not this way right and then we have the camera on top I'm just drawing boxes here three-dimensionally so instead of drawing a box this way we're gonna draw it that way right so it adds length and there's volume and height and that's and that makes it more dynamic and so then we have the camera we can kind of sketch pretty easily the camera lens and then we have the strap and then we have the merry-go-round and if you look at the base it's basically a circle it's two circles so we're gonna draw that top and bottom and then we're gonna add the base to it you can start to see how much it's coming from that perspective and how much volume it already has it's already got this very dynamic look to it right so we have the top of it, and, and you can keep this really simple. I'm just uh, just showing you. We have the top of it, and then we have the arms, and so on, and then we have the planes. So that's how I add, um, or that's how I see when I draw things, uh, even if it's a still life, or if it's a reportage on location, uh, if it's architecture, this is how I see things, and that's how I draw them. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to go to the painting, but I'm going to show this to you some more so that way you can see where they go.
paint. So this is the watercolor paper. This is the ink tents paper we're going to be using. Now this is a really, really great paper. It's it's uh, really heavy duty. Uh, you can pretty much use anything on it. Um, and of course, it's, you can use watercolor on it. Um, and it and it doesn't uh, it doesn't bend. It stays nice and flat, and it's very heavy. So it's a really, really nice paper. So we're going to take our H pencil, and we're going to go ahead and sketch um, our still life. Okay, so I'm going to start off here. Now I'm not going to draw the perspective lines, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw the outline of it. So that way we can get right to painting it. Now you don't have to start where I'm starting. You can start pretty much anywhere on the page. Um, I think it'd be good to have that there. Okay, great. So you can start pretty much anywhere in the still life. So I'm looking at it and I think I want to draw the camera first because it's at the very top. It's the tallest thing. Now we're just going to frame it. On the other side. So already we have a nice shape that I put in with the camera. And then we're just gonna draw a circle for the lens and then the back end. It's okay if it's a little bit off or a little bit wonky. Uh, we want it to be nice and fun. And my teacher used to say, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. I think that's one of my favorite expressions. Okay, so there we have the lens. Okay, and then we have the viewfinder. Now you don't have to draw it this dark, you can go a little bit lighter. Normally I go right to the wash uh, when I watercolor. So let's go ahead and stop there and then we can just go ahead and Draw the tin so that way we can get right to the shapes. What I'm focusing on while I'm drawing this is just the really big shapes that I'm seeing, right? I'm not really focused on the detail. The most important thing is that I'm seeing that perspective. I'm seeing how these objects sit in, in space. And so we're gonna go ahead and just Speed it up here a little bit, and and you don't have to go this fast. You know, I just uh, for time's sake, so that we can cover everything together. I can get through all of the different processes that I use. Right, so that's the arms of the merry-go-round, and. That's sort of the cone there. And then let's go ahead and just put a couple of the planes. There's some really nice shapes in here and that's another reason why I chose these objects is not only are they playful, but there's also they also make some really, really nice shapes then we have the wires, right, connecting to the arms. And fix the wing there. Then we have another plane going across this way. It's kind of at an angle, right? And so the thing that I want you to, to consider is that when you're when you're making the drawing, to just keep it nice and loose uh, and very relaxed. 
um, because the more relaxed you are when you're sketching, when you're drawing, uh, the funner and more relaxed the drawing will be. It's really a state of mind kind of thing. So let's go ahead and put that last plane there. Add that tail. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now let's add the stand. Right. I think I'll start here. And it kind of just sits there in space like that. And then let's add the middle kind of beam, I guess it's it's replicating. Another kind of cross beam here. So what's important is when you're when you're drawing, even if it's just a straight line, you start to consider how that line line or that, that object has volume and has thickness. So I'll draw it with that perspective in mind. You can see how it sits in there like that. And then we have the outside. There we go, right? And this comes around like so, okay? Then we have this sort of middle support that's round, right? And then let's add some of these wires that hold up the plane, okay? And then let's go to the robot. So that's looking pretty good, I like that. Okay, you can see we're on the right track here, right? Now, so let's go ahead and add the robot. We could start at the top, I think, and then just do the outline of the body. That's fine. It comes in there like that. It's really fun to draw this guy. We have the arm. He has these uh, squiggly arms that are cut out, which are pretty funny. Let's put the eyes in there so we have at least a reference of the size of things. And then his body, again, comes in from that vantage point right here. It's coming in to view to the foreground. Make sure that we're still okay. Yeah. And then the base and then that back wheel. There we go, All right? And then the last thing, we could go in the painting after this because I think we have the crux of it, right? We have the outlines, we have the basic shapes. I think this is a good starting point. We can go ahead and add the, the camera strap if we wanted and that's just, you could just use one line following the reference or looking at your still life. You can use either and take a picture of it um, before you finish. That way you can go back to it if need be. All right, so let's make sure everything's okay there. Yeah, it's, that's looking great. So we're done with the sketching part. Now we're getting get into using the colors. This is great. All right, so you'll see, and we might not get this far with this, because I'm taking my time and make sure, making sure that, that I'm showing you each step along the way. And normally, I don't do this drawing. I go right into the watercolor uh, wash right away. Um, and I can kind of see it just from, from experience without having to draw it. And then I'll go right into, after I do the wash, then I'll go ahead and outline it. But for now, we're gonna walk through it and take our time. But this took me about, I would say, 40 to 45 minutes uh, from start to finish. Um, so let's go to the wash. So the, we have a couple options here. I didn't get to show you at the beginning 
ink tank ink tents blocks. These are really wonderful. Here they are. And they come in these trays. They're very beautiful colors. You can see there's some primary colors there and secondary colors. I think they're incredible because they're very opaque. They're quite rich. And you can layer them and layer them and layer them. And uh, the color just sits so solid on top of the paper. Uh, and they're very intense, like the name implies. So they're, they're great. And you can use them uh, in, these, in these trays. You can, you can add water and use them as washes, or you can go right into, uh, you can go right into the paper uh, and go directly and then use a water brush to spread the color. So you, there's lots of different ways you can, um, you can utilize them. The interesting thing that I, that I forgot to share with you guys is that I'm still relatively new to these Intense products, I've been using Derwent pretty much my whole artistic life. Uh, I've been using Derwent pencils and colored pencils for, for uh, since, since I was a kid. And so they're, they're my, fa my favorite art supply. Uh, and I'm so happy that they um, are letting me use these, these Intense uh, art supplies with you guys. So one thing we could do is let's try a couple of different things. Let's try um, to render this camera first using some of these ink tents blocks. Okay, so let's see what happens. And we're gonna be play a little bit playful here because there's no mistakes uh, in this room, right? So. No such thing as a mistake. And I don't want you to ever think, especially when you're drawing and painting and having fun, that there's a right and wrong. It's really about being playful and really about experimenting. And that's really how you make some incredible discoveries, right? So we're gonna go ahead and see what happens. We're gonna do a mixture of using these pencils and using these blocks and, and see what happens. So I, I'd like to start with the blue for the camera because it's a lighter color and it's behind all of the objects, right? And so the camera is actually uh, black, it's dark, it's like a charcoal black. And so uh, what's gonna make this fun is we're not using the colors that we see. We're gonna use the colors that we wanna, to wanna render with, and that's gonna make it a lot more fun. And so what I found with these is that a little goes a long way, right? I'll show you, so let's put this down here. Let's take our watercolor brush, all right? And you can see that even with just a little bit of water coming off of that brush, it's quite intense, right? So you don't have to use much to get that color on there. And I think that's spectacular. Look at that, right? And then you can kind of pull, um, you can kind of pull the color because there's so much on there. Let's use a flat brush. Right. So we're gonna use a, this flat brush to kind of pull the color off and you could see it acts like a watercolor wash. And it's just beautifully rich and, and bright. And it goes a long way, even if you're just using a little bit of that color. Sorry for the shake of the camera there. I didn't notice it was shaking, but I'll try not to, to shake it too much. Okay, there we go. So that's one way to use it, right? So let's clean up the washes here, the brushes. Okay. Now, the other way you can use, the other way to use it is with the pencil. And this is pretty interesting because if you use the pencil, this is still wet, right? You can go right in there. Look at that. 
that's amazing, right? And it has the same kind of characteristic where with the, with the block, you can use it as a watercolor wash and it just sits on top of there like that. You don't get these mushrooms of, of water and paint, right? They're so easy to use uh, and so quick drying. I, that's one of the things I love about them. I work rather quickly when I draw. I like to draw on location. I'm uh, a reportage artist and so that means that I'm always, almost always on location on site when I'm drawing. And so I have to work very quickly and so the art, the art supplies that I use uh, have to be pretty quick drying and have to be, have to apply very quickly. And so I, these are, these are going to come in handy when I draw on location. So let's add a little bit more of that blue. Uh, we're going to focus on this camera so that way we can go from the wash to the outline. So I'm just going to take some of the values that I see here. If you look, some of the background values, some of the lighter values, and then go right into the mid-tone values here, right, and some of the shadows. So we're going to use the blue as part of that, right? So that's not going to use as much. If you want to kind of speed things up, you just take that a good old block and you just add that to there, all right? There we go. Now, the other thing I want to note is that it's absolutely okay if you go past the sketch lines. Sometimes I see uh, when people are rendering things that they're so afraid to go outside of those lines, it's absolutely okay because you'll see that when we case it in with the outline, with the, with the ink, that's really what frames it and what create, creates that shape. In fact, because it's playful, um, it's gonna be all right for us to do that, right? Okay, so let's take the wash again. Let's take a, a thicker one, this flat one. You can use round, but I like to use the square brush to kind of establish the tones. Right, let's get the outside of that lens here. And what, I'll, what I'm also keeping in mind is when I'm looking at the camera is the highlights, right? So the, the lightest part of the camera is on the right side of the body and the back end of this lens here in the top of the viewfinder. So I'm going to leave that a little bit colorless for now. And instead of leaving it white, I've decided it'd be funner. Okay. That's pretty good. It's going to be funner to use a yellow. In this case, we're going to use this uh, cadmium, cadmium yellow and this really nice bright intense yellow here, these two, right, the highlights. So I'm going to take this and this is when I just really begin to just start to play. There's really no right or wrong with the sequence of things. Uh, and I know that there is, if you were, if you were rendering this in a more traditional way, um, and you're really trying to define the color and the tones and things um, as realistic as you want. But what we're going here is a kind of expressionistic feel to the drawing, which is, which is really the way I like to draw things. I like to to express myself and I like for the the art to to be expressive to have 
some kind of character and personality. So I try to inject a little bit of that. And try to create a kind of mood and feeling with the drawing as opposed to how it, how it literally looks, right? So now we could take the wash again. This brush is coming in pretty handy. So you'll see like, it's very direct, right? Really easy to apply. And we can, again, we can go right outside of that. And you'll see why it's coming pretty handy to do that and how, why that's okay. Because if you look, I do go well outside and that creates a kind of mood and it also creates a tone for the background as well at the same time. So it's a good way to do that, to do those two things at the same time. I'm using just a little bit of wash um, to kind of clean up the brush. You don't have to use much. Right. So now what we're going to add is some warmer colors on top of uh, the blue and yellow. Right. So we're going to add some pink. I'm gonna add this fuchsia and carmine pink. And what I'd like to do is, since we're talking about making it different here, being a little different and being playful, I'm gonna go ahead and just go with my gut here and just go with some feeling and, and just put it right in there. And look at how it just sits on top of that wash, right? It just goes right into that. Okay. Look at that. It's beautiful. That color is amazing. And what I love about these intense colors is if you look at this fuchsia, the way I applied it to this camera, I didn't have to wait long for it to dry. It sat on that color and as soon as I washed it and it didn't make it muddy. So it's nice and opaque and the color just sits on top. And you can start to see how fun it is with some of that color. And let's use a little bit of these intense blocks here to add even more color. I'd like to add a little bit of blue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the dark, the darkest parts last. It's almost like you're adding the highlights last as well. So let's add just blue and violet too, the kind of in the middle ground, but a little bit darker. So we're gonna to start to go a little darker here. So what I'd like to do is add this to the side of the camera. Actually, that's a little bit light. So let's go ahead and use this nice looking violet. Okay, add it there. And on the base of the camera, right? to the inside of the camera, viewfinder. And I'm just looking for the really big blocks of tone and color and something that helps me, um, helped me when I was learning to paint, when I was learning to draw and paint, is squinting your eye. I know that you might hear that here, here and there. It is quite helpful because what it does is it allows you to see the tones uh, into, into big blocks of color. So if you look at still life and you squint your eye, you can see the shapes of color and the shapes of light, right? Okay, 
That's looking pretty good. Alright. So now let's add a wash on top of that. I'm going to use this brush because we're starting to get a little bit more precise. Uh, but we're still being playful about it. A little bit more water so that way it pulls the pigment a little more. There we go. One side here. It's nice rings there. Okay. viewfinder knob. I'm looking at the darkest part of the camera being on this left the left side of the body here. There we go. That's looking great. Okay, so next thing we're gonna add is one of my favorite colors I've been using a lot of lately is pink right so i found that this carmine pink and this fuchsia is uh it's pretty good and also orange you know what actually let's try this since we're being pretty spontaneous let's use this orange as an accent color so we're going to use um, this cadmium orange let's pick another orange here so we're using a lot of primaries here to really make it pop, right? So I'm gonna use this to add some of those highlights. And I'm gonna put this color right into the viewfinder and on the outside there. I love how if you look at how the color, when it's applied, how much it just loves to sit on top of the color beneath it. And that makes it so fun and so easy to apply it pretty much anywhere in the painting. go right that's looking great so what I've decided as I'm doing this with you guys is that something that I did was I got a little bit dark with this version although I love how this looks because it's very moody I decided to go even more playful with our version here and you could see where it's going so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep those darks a little bit more toned down and make the highlights pop a little bit more and see where that goes. But I'm really liking where this is going as well. You can see the different characteristics. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use another brush. This here, this water brush. Cool thing about this brush is that you don't have to uh, dip it in the water you can just apply a little bit of pressure with the handle and it just applies that water evenly. These are pretty inexpensive. You can find them at any art store, um, but they work quite well with the Derwent Intense colors. Wow, I'm really liking where this is going. This is great. I'm glad that, that I did it this way. And uh, it's also, it kind of highlights what I'm um, making. The, the focus here is that uh, if you just keep things very loose, uh, very fun, um, and don't be too strict about your application, 
you're a little bit more open to learning things. All right, there we go. Now, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there for a minute to first let it dry and then also get into the last bit here towards the finish where we're gonna use uh, the line maker pen and the paint pen and I'll show you how that's applied when we use it for the finish. That's looking great. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up the brush a little bit. You can see this is all the water I've used, right? Uh, you see that pretty good? Yeah. And you can see there's not a lot of color in it, so you don't have to use a lot of water with these brushes. And you can see how much of that color from the blocks and from the pencil really gets applied to the paper. I think that's amazing, right? So with watercolor and with other washes like wash and watercolor, you have to do layers and layers and layers and you have to, to be pay, more patient. So this is gonna help me with a lot of my drawing because uh, it's very efficient the way it's applied, right? So now we're going to be casing it in. We're going to be creating the nice big shape there's a couple of things that we can use here. We can use these paint pens, right? And we can use these line maker pens. So I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to try this paint pen. You don't have to use them in this order. So the way this works is there's, um, the, the fluid is inside, the ink is inside and you have to shake it. There's a little shaker ball in there that mixes it. So just do this for about 30 seconds. And while this is happening, of course, this is drying really quickly. Uh, if you look, you know, it doesn't pick up the color anymore. So that's also a great thing about Inktense Color is that it dries pretty efficiently. So while I'm doing this, shake, shake, shake. <laughs> All right, that should be good. Now, it's good to have an extra piece of paper to make sure that. It's running nicely. All right, so that's a tip there. You have to sort of push down, right? To get the fluid to start running through like that. And there we go. You can see it's nice and opaque and very fluid, right? I love pens that just draw nice and fluid and just flow, right? You can apply a little bit more pressure and get more thickness on there, right? So we're gonna use that and see how that works for the drawing. And that's how I created these outlines here, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to draw an outline of it, right? And so you can start at the top here. Now we have a little flower of ink there, that's okay. That's perfectly okay. We're gonna start with the outside and we're gonna draw it the same way and the same characteristic as we did when we did the sketch. Just nice and fun and loose. There's the outside of it. Okay. And look at how it just eats up that ink and just sits on top of that paper so well. There's not very many things that you can use to draw directly on uh, watercolor um, medium like this, but 
this is one of them and it's 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 great because it's it's so opaque so you can use it for highlights or you can use it for outlines so that's what I used for this outline here right. let's go a little bit more with a little bit more detail to define the camera a little more and occasionally you'll see that that some of the fluid does leak out a little bit and that's because I was pushing down a little bit more but that's okay because that makes it a lot more fun in the drawing uh, it's not so literal right okay so there's the viewfinder and then we have another viewfinder here and if you feel like you want to have a little bit more control you can al always use the line maker right I'll show you in a second how that looks uh, when we use that. I'm just going to put the square in and the outside square. And I actually love when it splotches like that. It creates a lot of thickness and thinness and, vari and variation in line, which is perfectly okay. And then you can use that ink and you can kind of pick it up for for tone and mark making. Right. So let's let's go ahead and finish using this pen by defining the camera lens. Let's create a nice easy circle. And then we have the back end like that. There we go. Right? Actually I think what I'd like to do is add the strap so you can see it sitting in space a little bit more right what you do is just follow that pencil line and it goes behind and up around that's pretty fun Right, and then you can add the outside of the strap. It's almost like a roller coaster ride we're talking about. It looking like an amusement park, right? And then add the outside like that. There we go. That's looking really great. Okay. So now, so that's the paint pen. That's how that looks on top of the Inktense block and Inktense pencil. So now what I want to show you is how the line maker looks, right? In this case, I'm going to use the 0.8. This comes in, I think it's a five or six quantity. I think it's, yeah, these here. And this is the thickest one of those. As far as I remember, it's not as thick as the paint pen, but I like to use it in this case. I used it for some of the detail that you see here. Some of the marks and some of the mark making I did and some of the detail outlines. You can see it's a little bit thinner than the paint pen. So what I'd like to define is a little bit more of the details of the camera that way. Start to create the character of the camera a little bit more. There we go. We have the inside of it there. That's looking great. And then we have a piece of tape that holds the body together. It also prevents light leaks. <laughs> there we go. And we have the side. And you can decide what kind of details and how much details you want to add. You can add, for example, you can add marks, dots, dashes, right? And you can start to create texture. But for now, I think what we're trying to achieve is a kind of graphic 
look. To this illustration. And there we go. That looks great. So that's looking pretty interesting. We've decided to go a lot brighter and I think it looks a lot funner and this looks a lot moodier, right? So it all depends on what kind of direction and what kind of feel you want to go for. And I think this is looking great. The very, very last thing that I'd like to finish with is something that I like to use and one of my favorite things to use with these ink tents supplies is the paint pen white color here and the white ink tense block. There's also the white pencil. But these are a lot more opaque, especially this ink tense block. And I'll show you how useful they are when you want to add the last bit of highlight in the drawing, right? So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to look at, so I'm looking at the camera now and I'm seeing some of those highlights. And with this, a little goes a long way, right? So we're going to take just the tip of it or the flat side of it. Let's start with the tape. And I'm just going to do a little bit there. Just like that. Right. And then I'm going to use a little bit of it for the viewfinder because there's glass there. And then there's a metal clip. And then just the highlight that I see, the highlights that I see of the light shining on the body, the outside of the camera, and then the outside ring of the lens. And if you use this sparingly, and you kind of calculate where these highlights will look good, you'll see that a just a little bit goes a long way and then just the outside ring of that lens, and then maybe just the last bit of it for highlight. And we have this tape here that's coming from the left side of the body. There we go. Now, we are pretty much at the end of this demo. And the last thing you might wanna do before we decide to finish with the camera is you can kind of tone down the color of that highlight with some water. Um, but you'll see the difference that it really tones down the highlight and there's also a nice texture um, to the highlight when you don't add water. And, that's, and that stays dry right away, you'll see. And there we go. So you can pretty much do the rest of the objects this way. Uh, and the wonderful thing about, about these intense blocks and pencils is you'll see how the color just likes to layer and applies so easily and so quickly. You can, you can work from, from the background to the foreground or you can work in different ways throughout the entire canvas because you don't have to worry about the uh, color drying and waiting for the color to dry. So we got through this fairly quickly and I'm gonna go ahead and treat the rest of it this way and, and probably um, add the strap last. But that's the great thing about, like I said, with, this, with these colors is that you can, you can put color on top of color and it works both ways, so. It's very, very easy to use, and I hope that you had a lot of fun drawing and painting with me, and as much as I had fun doing it, and I, I learned a lot, actually. <laughs> I learned quite a bit about, about the pigment and, uh, and how much fun it is to, to apply. So thanks for, for, for uh, joining me, and uh, thank you, Derwent, for letting me do this tutorial. 
And um, we're going to have a Q&A now, and uh, I'd love to answer all your questions. Uh, so please join in and uh, ask away. Thanks so much, guys.